Hey everyone! Welcome to episode 8 in my Stretcher Stamps scrapbooking video series. This month, I'm joined by my friends Ashley Horton, who is AshleyHorton75 on Instagram, Shannon Manton, aka Shannon underscore pages on Instagram, and Amber Dawson, who is a Dawson816 on Instagram, and we're going to be sharing our favorite ways to use digital stamps. Before I dive into this month's video, here are some projects that were shared over on Instagram um, using the hashtag SYS scrapbooking over the last month. Leilani Gilcrease was one of my guest contributors last episode. Um, this was featuring outline image stamps, and she really went above and beyond with fussy cutting all of those cute little images that she created using stamps from Social Paper Plan, and I love the bold and vibrant background that she created with those stamped images. Patricia Roebuck was another one of my guest contributors, and I love how she used some outline circle stamps from Heidi Swap to make these fun interactive elements for her layout. Christiane Cabobag was my next guest contributor, and she made these adorable custom charms from Shrinky Dink Plastic. Um, and I'll have to admit, when she first started heating up the plastic with a heat gun, it started warping and I had my doubts, but they turned out so cute. And last but not least, Amber Dawson made an extra video featuring some outline icon image stamps, and she made four amazing projects with these stamp sets. For my contributions last episode, I used some tiger stamps from Mama Elephant to make some embellishments for my layout documenting our Chinese New Year celebrations, and I also shared some tips for using alcohol ink markers for coloring in your stamped images as well. And in my second layout, I did some messy watercoloring with my distress inks to color in these outline images from Studio Calico to document a hiking trip that we did. Make sure to check out all those videos in my Stretch Your Stamps scrapbooking playlist if you missed any last month. Tiffany Mitchell, aka Blue Pixie 79 on Instagram, continues to share wonderful stamping inspiration over on Instagram each month. And this month, I love how she combined two different fonts to make a custom title for her bright and colorful page here. Just a reminder that if you'd like to share some layouts on Instagram inspired by our Stretch Your Stamps videos, make sure to use the hashtag SYS Scrapbooking on Instagram, and I'll pick out a few to feature in my video next month. For today's video, I'm going to focus on techniques featuring digital stamps that don't require Photoshop or any fancy cutting machines or um, other equipment, because I know a lot of people don't have access to those, but if you're interested in some more sophisticated um, and complicated techniques that do require special equipment, um, I do have some videos that I did for December Daily featuring 10 different techniques for using digital stamps um, between both of those videos. Um, and of course, I'm using December Daily stamps in those videos, but those techniques can be applied to all sorts of digital snaps. For both of my layouts today, I'm going to be using the Swirls stamp set from Ali Edwards and Laura Wanzik, and specifically I'm going to be focusing on this large stamp that looks like wavy lines. I'm going to drag this into Microsoft Word, um, which is a, the program that I use most often to do my digital scrapbooking. And first of all, I'm going to crop it down so that I get rid of all the extra white space around that stamped image. Once that's done, I'm going to size this down to five inches wide, which is the same width of a page outside the page protector in a LifeCrafted album. And the good thing about Microsoft Word is that if you type in a specific width that you want your image to be, the program will automatically change the height to the same proportions so that it doesn't distort the image. And next after that, I'm going to add a black border around this image um, just by going into the format image toolbar and then clicking solid line under the line section. And I'm going to print this out on a piece of transparency. I do have the physical copy um, of this stamp set as well. Um, you can see it on the left side for comparison. And the physical stamp is only three inches wide and four inches tall. So if I wanted to use this um, as a feature for my Life Crafted album page, um, it's only going to get me so far. Whereas with the digital version, I can resize it to whatever size I want. Next, I'm going to cut this stamped image out and um, 
cut along the three middle wavy lines and I'm just going to ignore the top and bottom lines for the purposes of this video um, because they don't span across the whole width of the stamped area. After I'm finished cutting them out, I'm going to label each section with a Sharpie marker on the right side, going from top to bottom, one through four, and that's because I want to be able to tell at a quick glance what order these sections go in, as well as which side is the front and which side is the back. So now that I have these templates, I'm going to start making my first spread. And my idea is to kind of stack some of the um, colored pieces of cardstock here together to create um, kind of like waves on the top and bottom of my page. And the ones at the bottom are going to form pockets for me to slide some photo mats into. So I have this pack of gradient cardstock from Altenew. Um, these are in the color palette Seashore, and they designed these gradient sets specifically for use with their layered floral die sets. But I thought this blue gradient would look great with the layered waves that I had in mind. So here I'm just starting out with the bottom and um, stacking the transparencies how I want them to be layered on my page. Um, I did flip the topmost transparency upside down to give that curved edge otherwise it would just be the straight edge of the top of that stamp. And I'm going to place my templates down in the middle of these strips of colored cardstock um, leaving half an inch on either side and that half an inch is going to be what I use to create the hinges to assemble the pockets later on. I'm tracing along the top of that template with a pencil and then cutting along those lines with my scissors um, and I'm just going to repeat those steps for each of these colored pieces of cardstock making sure to put it, position the top of the template towards I'm um, kind of like the middle of that strip of cardstock so that I can use the bottom half for my pocket and the top half for um, decorating the top of my page. And I am going from the darkest color um, at the very bottom to the lightest color at the very top um, in terms of my cardstock um, when I'm layering these down and then going the opposite way, um, the darkest color at the very top going to the lightest color at the very bottom um, when I'm layering um, going down from the top of my page. Once that's done, I'm going to take all of the bottom layers and score them um, at half an inch on each end of the cardstock. And that will make my hinges um, to form around my pockets. And for the top layers, I'm going to cut off the extra half an inch on each end um, because I'm not going to be creating pockets on the top of my page. Next, I'm just cutting a piece of white cardstock down to five inches wide by eight and three eighths of an inch tall and positioning my pocket pieces at the bottom of my page, um, making sure that they're spaced out how I want them to be so that I can see um, enough of each of those pocket pieces. So I'm going to start adhering these pockets down, starting from the backmost pocket first. Um, I did mark the bottom of that pocket with a pencil mark so that I can remember the placement. And for these pockets, I'm going to be wrapping the hinge around the front of my page and adhering the hinges down onto the back side. So I'm actually going to trim my paper down um, a tiny bit so that um, the white cardstock fits into um, the pockets a bit better. And I'm just working through each of these pieces, um, just using some 3 8 inch score tape on each of the hinges and making sure that they're in the right position on the front of my page. And then attaching my hinges to the back of that page. And um, I did accidentally attach this darkest blue one um, right after I attached the lightest one um, when I actually wanted it to be going from the lightest to the darkest. Um, so I had to kind of peel away that score tape but I did manage to save that piece. So just going back through and attaching those pieces in the correct order that I had originally wanted them to be. And now it's time to attach that um, final piece down and I'm lining the very bottom of the pocket with some eighth of an inch score tape to seal off the bottom of those pockets. And when I went to attach my hinges, I realized there was a bit too much bulk on the back part of the page here. Um, so I am going to snip away the top parts of those hinges um, that would be overlapping the other hinges and attach the bottom parts of those hinges into place. 
after that, I'm moving to the top part of my page and um, layering on these top pieces, um, which is going to be a bit easier. I'm just using my Tombow Mono Permanent Adhesive Tape Runner to adhere everything down into place. And once that's done, I'm going to start working on the accompanying page for this spread, um, which is going to be a full page photo. And this is going to be technique two for using digital stamps. So I have my photo here that I've imported into another Microsoft Word document, and I'm going to resize it to five inches wide and crop down at eight and three eighths of an inch tall. And um, I'm going to use these digital stamps to layer them on top of photos um, before printing them out. So the stamp I'm going to use is the Today Stamp from the Day in the Life 2022 digital stamp set. And I'm just resizing this so that it'll fit in this area here between where my friend's legs are and the right part of the photo where the holes are going to be punched to place this photo into my album. And I'm going to turn the text white so that it stands out a bit more on my photo. And I found the easiest way to do this on Microsoft Word is to go into the format picture toolbar. And under this pentagon icon, which is um, the effects menu, I'm going into artistic effects and selecting the photocopy option, which turns the text gray. Then I'm going into the picture menu and under picture color, you can recolor the image different hues, including white. Next, I'm going to re-stamp that text down, um, going up from that first stamp, um, but I want it to kind of fade away as I'm stamping up um, to mimic the ombre look of the blue waves that I have going on in my other page. And to do that, I'm going to first copy and paste that first stamp that I have in white. And then I'm going to play around with the transparency a bit. So I'm changing the transparency of the second stamp to 10%, the next one 20%, the one after that is 30%, um, and so on and so forth, until I get to 80% with my last one. And that's pretty much as transparent as you can get without losing the text completely. And as I'm doing this, I'm also um, going to align each of these stamps on top of each other going up um, and make sure that they're evenly spaced out with one another. Once that's done, I'm going to do my best to select all eight stamped images here and group them together um, with the photo because I do want to rotate this photo so that I can fit more photos onto my eight and a half by 11 piece of photo paper before I print it out. And it takes me a while to get everything grouped together, um, but this way I can fit some of the smaller photos that I have um, that I'll be placing in the pockets that I made earlier on. And these measure four and a half inches wide by two and a half inches tall. So once they're positioned just right, I'm going to print these all off. And I've also printed out two extra photos that are three and three quarter inches tall by two and an eighth inch wide. And um, I also printed out a digital journaling card from an older day in the life kit. Um, I just like how the blue on the top of this card goes with the blues in my spread. And I'm going to cut um, these photos apart with about an eighth of an inch border all the way around. I just like having that white border um, around my photos. And I'm also going to be cutting out some photo mats for these photos. Um, I'm using an even lighter blue cardstock. This one is from a pack of variety colors from Michaels. And these photo mats are going to be cut at a quarter of an inch larger than my photos so that I have an eighth of an inch border with the blue all the way around my white border. And the colored photo mats will just provide a bit of contrast between the white borders of my photos and the white base page behind my photos. Um, so I'm just adhering all of my photos down here onto their photo mats. To finish off my layout, I'm adding a couple of embellishments from the Great Outdoors kit from Ali Edwards that was released last year. Um, the wood veneer says all good things are wild and free, um, and I'm attaching that with my Gita K Connect glue, which is my favorite wet adhesive for applying um, wood veneer pieces. And I'm also adding that pleather sun on the top as well to make it kind of look like the top layers of waves are like clouds in the sky and the bottom layers are waves um, like waves on a lake. 
And I think this works perfectly for my spread about the day we were um, hiking around the lake. Here are some photos of my finished spread. And I really love the way it turned out um, with all of the blues and all of the layering going on um, to add a bit more interest to my page. For my second spread, I'm going to use the same wavy digital stamp, but in a slightly different way. So I have four photos that I want to include on one page, um, and my idea was to take all four of them and fit them into the four sections of my digital stamp. So I'm starting with the bottom photo first, um, resizing it to five inches wide, then dragging it to the lower part of this digital stamp and cropping off the extra bits at the top and bottom of the photo um, that are overhanging that bottom corner of the stamped image. And to be able to drag these images and the digital stamp around, you wanna make sure that you um, right click the images and go to the button that says wrap text. And you have to either select square or behind text for the photo and in front of text for the digital stamp um, because otherwise Microsoft Word won't let you um, drag one image on top of another. And when you go to crop the image down, um, you can see the faded lines of the digital stamp behind it. So you can get it cropped pretty close to um, the right height. And after I print these out, I'm going to use the templates that I made earlier in the video to trim the photos down into the curved shapes. For this second from the bottom section, I want to layer in one of the other stamps that came in the Swirls digital stamp set. Um, there's one that says Memories and it's designed to fit in that second from the bottom section. Um, so I'm just going to drag that digital stamp in and resize it so that it fits nicely into um, that section there. Um, and next I'm going to recolor this in um, a similar way to how I recolored the today stamp from the, my last layout, um, just so that it's white and it stands out nicely from the background. And I'm also going to drag in this um, Remember This stamp from the Coordinating Stories digital stamp set from Ali Edwards and Laura Wanzik. And this stamp fits perfectly in that curve below the word memories. So I'm just going to um, resize that and kind of rotate it around so that the curve fits exactly right with my um, curve in my digital stamp. And once I have it positioned how I want it, I'm going to select the two stamped words as well as the photo and group them together. And that way I can move this whole photo onto my printing page and still keep those words exactly in the right place. Just repeating these same steps so that I have um, the four photos for my four sections um, of that wavy stamp. And once I have those arranged onto my photo paper, I'm going to print those out. To trim these photos down into the curved shapes, I'm going to be placing the templates on the backs of the photos so that I can draw on the backs with a Sharpie marker and not have to worry about leaving straight Sharpie marks um, on the fronts of my photos. Um, just in case I don't cut all the way to the edge of my Sharpie mark. So you want to make sure that when you have your photo face down on the table, your template is also face down as well on top of that. And that's why it was important at the beginning of the video for me to make sure that I marked which side was the front side of all of these template pieces. The photo paper that I'm using is also thin enough that if I hold it up to the light, I can kind of see through the photo paper to where the image is in the front. So I can make sure that I have my templates nice and lined up before I trace all of my curved lines. And um, for my photo paper, I do use the Epson um, photo paper glossy. Once I've cut all of these images out, I'm going to adhere them to my base page. And because the Life Crafted album page is a lot taller proportionally than the digital wavy stamp is, um, I'm going to be left with a blank space somewhere in my page. Now I've chosen to have my blank space in between the third section and the bottom one, um, but you can put it in the middle of the page if you want, or even shift all of the photos down so that the blank space is all the way at the top of the page. But this is just what I decided would work um, best for my layout here. 
as I'm debating about what to do to fill in that um, white space in between my photos, um, I'm going to use the white puffy alphabet stickers from the Storyteller Basics Collection from Ali Edwards to spell out my title for the left side of this photo. Um, and I ran out of E's actually. So I just cut off the bottom part of a letter Z and attach that below a letter F to make my letter E. And you can hardly tell that I pieced the, that um, E letter together once I have everything on my page. And as for filling in this blank section here, um, I debated about using that bottom template as a stencil so that I could do some ink blending to add some color to this section. Um, but in the end, I just decided to keep things simple by doing some handwritten journaling, um, using that edge of the template to keep my handwriting in a consistent curve with those photos. And here are some close-ups of my final layout. I just love that I was able to use that same digital wavy stamp in two completely different ways to give two really unique looks to my life crafted album pages. I hope you enjoyed those tips and tricks for using digital stamps in your scrapbooking projects. I would love to see what you create with digital stamps as well, so don't forget to use the hashtag SYS scrapbooking on Instagram if you decide to try out any of the techniques shown in this video or any of the techniques in Ashley, Shannon, and Amber's videos. I'll be sharing new episodes for my Stretch Your Stamps scrapbooking video series on the second Saturday of each month, so make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel for more stamping inspiration. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below, and make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching!